This video consists of kids reenacting the historic events narrated along with historical sketches and photographs. White text on a black background reads, John Brown's Fort, a story of a building. Hello, you might know me as the John Brown Fort, but I was actually a fire engine house in Harpers Ferry, Virginia, completed in June 1848. I was used as protection in case a fire broke out. People walk by the fort. Most days were about the same. Men and boys walked by every day on their way to work making guns. Trains pass through town several times a day. When night falls, the town grows quiet, except for the sound of the river. Then one day, everything changed. Next streets, October 16th, 1859, approximately 10.30 p.m. John Brown walks through Harpers Ferry holding a pipe. It was an October evening. My night watchman, Daniel, heard noises in town and went to the armory gate. People at the gate? Open gate! No. John Brown? The citizens interfere! I must only burn the town and have blood! Here are some of the things I remember of that time. Raiders restrain civilians and lead them into the fort. Around 4 a.m., raiders brought in hostages. Some were made to drill holes in my walls for guns. At 10 a.m., church bells started ringing, warning the citizens that something was wrong. A man peeks around the corner of the fort. Around 2 p.m., the mayor, Fontaine Beckham, is killed. He's shot by someone in the fort and falls to the ground. There was so much chaos inside and out, John Brown was getting nervous and pacing around like an animal in a cage that day. 36 hours had passed since the commotion started. Men named Robert E. Lee and Jeb Stewart came to Harper's Ferry with Marines to put a stop to it. At the door of the fort. If they peaceably surrender, they shall be kept in safety to await the orders of the president. No! Stewart leads men in trying to break down the doors of the fort. One, two, three. Text reads, the Marines break through the door and end John Brown's raid at Harper's Ferry. Eventually, the Civil War happens, and I was used as a prison, powder magazine, and a supply house. The Union soldiers loved me, but the Confederate troops did not. Old photos of the fort? In Harper's Ferry, I became very famous. People loved me here. Later, I moved to Chicago for the World's Fair. I really didn't like it there. Hardly anyone came to visit. I was almost turned into a stable. Luckily, I was saved from that smelly place by a woman named Kate Field. She arranged for me to go back home to Harper's Ferry on Murphy Farm, where I lived from 1895 to 1909. Then I moved to Storer College and was used as a museum. Finally, in 1968, the National Park Service moved me back home to Lower Town. The narrator appears as John Brown. Today, I am one of the most important buildings in Harper's Ferry National Historical Park. Thousands of people visit me annually. Will you? Over a model of John Brown's fort spinning and changing colors, white text reads, Directors Haley Kautz, Michaela Offit, Editors James Roberts, Kaelin Rousen, Videographers Alex Hall, Jacob Nadig, Costumers Courtney Liskowitz, Abby White, Actors Cole Brown, Jacob Nadig, Hunter Purdy, Azzy Smith, Quinlan Keyes, Tatum Warshaw, Emily Gray, Amber Simpson, Alex Hall, Narrator Jonathan Hornbuckle. Credits continue for several more seconds, after which appeared the 2016 National Park Service Centennial logo and the Find Your Park logo.